Good morning. This is Courtney from Naive Melody Front Yard Farm. I'm up on the Olympic Peninsula in the Pacific Northwest, Zone 8B. So if you like gardening and cooking videos and mom life, be sure to hit subscribe and click that little bell button if you wanna be alerted when I make new videos. So it's early in the morning. I actually got out here before my kids got up. I haven't done that in a few days. So I wanted to show you just really quickly some things that are going on in the garden. We have some really big winds and a few disasters. I'm gonna show you one right now. If you're familiar with the layout from old videos, you'll know right here used to be the Great Wall of Peas and it has completely collapsed. So there's that. So this is the state of our peas. <laughs> um, they started leaning a while ago and then we got a little windy one night and this happened. They actually were about ready to come down anyway because over here we can start planting our second crop of peas. I could have done it the last couple weeks. So I think I'm gonna go ahead, rip that out, put the frame back up, uh, plant some new peas along the edge, and then I think I'll put some lettuces in the front and see if we can get another crop and just kind of take off anything off of the plant that I can. I had quite a few that I was gonna save seeds from and I think I have plenty to have enough for planting next year. So I'm up in one of my tall beds. Everything's gonna get a nice water this morning, but you can see things are doing awesome. Um, the spinach has really taken off to where I could pretty soon start coming and getting a few of the baby greens. I like doing spinach as a cut and come again. Uh, the romaine, I do a little bit of the cutting and coming again, and then I take the heads. I lost one, but that's okay. Those are getting really nice and big, so I might just throw something little in that space. We'll see. Uh, Swiss chard is doing well. Again, I lost one plant, but the others look just fine. The kale looks gorgeous. I love how they're turning out. And then I've got some marigolds and then my cucumbers. I already came and harvested. I got three more big old cucumbers and I'm gonna do a little video of a recipe I'm gonna use those for. But um, there might be a few more that are about ready in there. We'll see. I also have a lot of my bush beans finally coming up. Uh, we had just enough time in the season left to plant bush beans uh, about two weeks ago maybe. And so I just started throwing them anywhere they would fit. So I have quite a few in here and then some in two other beds and they're finally popping up. So I'm really hoping to get a good crop because I wanna make a bunch of dilly beans to put up um, for us and for Christmas presents. So I'm stoked that those are coming along. And then this is the salt and pepper plant, uh, salt and pepper cucumber, which just hasn't gotten really big, but I do have that big old guy right there. So what I might do is just go ahead and harvest him pretty soon. He's kind of short. Um, and then just slice him up and throw him in my fridge pickles. We'll see. And my squash is kind of, or this is the golden zook. Uh, it's coming along. I still don't really see any, well, I guess there's a couple. There's a couple of blooms that are way down there. So I'm hoping we get some. We do still have enough time in the season if it stays warm. So fingers crossed. And then my sunflower is getting nice and tall. So this bed I've been meaning to come out and do a lot of work on and I just haven't had the chance. So everything is kind of looking like crappy crap. But I have those extra kale plants potted on and they're doing just fine. My kids ripped one out. The twins got out into the garden and I was trying to corral them but they did some real damage. <laughs> so uh, they picked one of the plants right out of the pot. So I don't know if that one's gonna make it, but the ones that I have planted in the dirt are doing great. I, looks like I lost one right there. So I'll probably pop that guy in that spot. Uh, but they are getting nice and big. My squash, this is a green zucchini and it's doing really good. It's finally really filling out and every day it's bigger, which is awesome. And I do have some fruit coming. There's one right there. There's a few other little guys, and then I've got new blooms coming. And then you can see I've got some pole beans down at the bottom. Those are some purple pole beans. They're looking nice and big right over here. 
So pretty soon I'm gonna put some string along here and they'll grow up on the poles and on the zucchini plant. And then my broccoli's doing great, these little guys. That one's looking like it got a little munched by something. A few things in here are looking a little munched, but that's okay. I'll put some slow go down, keep an eye on it. But these I need to get out of the way, maybe somewhere with a little more sun, keep them really well watered and then pass them on to some friends. And then my plan is to just fill this up with some root veg, beets and carrots, what have you. Here's our tomato cage, which has some wins and disasters, a little bit of both. Uh, this plant, I still haven't seen any real fruit set. There's blossoms all along the top, so hopefully those are to come. This is the big rainbow that's supposed to get huge, fatty, like really big tomatoes. This is the Tasty Lee, which has been producing so well. We've been coming most days and coming and grabbing a few tomatoes. Beckett and I raided the plant last night, and there's still a few more that are really close. And they're really good. They're really meaty potatoes. They don't are potatoes tomatoes they don't have a whole lot of like seeds and fluid in them they're really good Beckett loves munching on them here's a disaster so this is my Paul Robinson and again it got a little bit windy and this branch here that has this really big tomato on it cracked right off you can kind of see it right there so I just propped it back up I'm hoping it does okay what I'm thinking I might want to do is take some of the bottom leaves off and try to bury it high enough to where that's in the ground again. I don't know if that's the right thing to do, uh, but I'm hopeful. It seems like it's okay so far. And that tomato has gotten bigger since it happened. So we'll see. And then this one is starting to kind of blush and turn. That's um, kind of the color this tomato is going to be. It's going to get darker, but they're super pretty. And we have bush beans coming up all over the place. These guys are little, and I planted them at the same time, but they're a little more shaded in here. But I've got them popping up all over the place. And I'm hoping that that will kind of help put some nitrogen into the soil too, to help out the tomatoes. We'll see if that's how it works out. And then this one here, this is my Dr. Witchies. I, hey, where's my fruit? I had some fruit. Oh, there's, there it is. <laughs> Just a whittle guy. Um, and I think that might be my only one. So we'll see. It seems like to me, like we've had a lot of pollination issues up in here. And I haven't seen a whole lot of bees in the garden, which freaks me out. This time of year though, up here, a lot of them kind of peace out and head over to all the blackberry blossoms. So that could be what's going on right now. Oh, there's another one. So Just a wee guy. But we've got some good stuff going. I'm really proud of the Tasty Lee. I'm super excited about the Paul Robson and how big that guy's looking, but we just don't have a lot of fruit. But there's still time in the season. I just get really impatient. So over here on our little pallet container, we've got mostly squash and these big old sunflowers. These are like those mammoth sunflowers, so they should be ginormo, we'll see. That gets baby pumpkins that still have one plant on them. That's just enough. He comes out and visits his pumpkin all the time. This is a really big pumpkin plant and I've seen a lot of blossoms and quite a few of them have been female, but I haven't seen anything set. So again, I'm wondering about pollination. This one has finally got some fruit. This is just a yellow crookneck and I've got one there. I've got two of them in there. So I'm thrilled about that. I have tons and tons and tons of summer squash recipes. So usually I'm okay with having like a huge amount of squash because I have tons of stuff to do with them. So I'm hoping that actually happens this year. And then this is a little patty pan. Lots of blossoms, lots of blossoms coming up, but no fruit. Oh, but there's a fruit. There's one little, little tiny. So we'll see. And then my starts, these are a lot of my brassicas that I started on a video and they're looking great. They have all their, you know, first little baby leaves, but there's a few that the second leaves are just starting to show up. So I can't wait to get those transplanted into our new beds that we're gonna be putting in. And we've got some good stuff up in here. 
This is my artichoke that I'm letting bloom out and it's looking really beautiful. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Still have a bit of an aphid problem. It doesn't seem quite as bad. I just spray it down with water whenever I can and soap spray. Sometimes I still haven't gotten ladybugs because that just hasn't happened. Peony plant, chives, and some, ah, uh, what is this, lemon balm? Lemon balm. And the chives, I've left a lot of, the, like a ton of the blossoms to collect seeds. And I'm gonna have lots of seeds. So if you watch and you're in the area, even if you're not and you want some chive seeds, just let me know and I'll pop them in the mail or I'll leave them for you to pick up. Just let me know. And dun, 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 over here, these are our little sunflowers that keep getting hugely munched, but they seem okay anyway. They're just little squatty guys. So I can't wait for those to bloom out. I still have some of my basil, like my Thai basil. It's doing okay. Those ones I really thought I was gonna lose. So they're still there. And then I've got that one there, which is doing just fine. It's flowering out quite a bit, but I have another basil plant over in my herb bed that I usually pick off of. My eggplant has blooms. So I'm still just kind of waiting to see what it does. I thought about ripping it out, but this one did look like blooms were still coming on and that was the case. There's still a few more. They're trying to show up. So if I get one eggplant, I'll be stoked. <laughs> and then my pepper. And the thing about the pepper is I don't remember the variety. I lost the tag. Uh, that little fruit has been there for quite a while, but it was like lime green still even a couple days ago, last time I was out here and it's really starting to turn. So that's exciting. It's minuscule, but I don't remember if it's supposed to be, but I have some more blossoms coming on too. And the Romas, I have so much fruit on them. I'm so excited. I haven't seen a single one start blushing yet, uh, but I believe they tend to usually go all at the same time. Uh, these are determinate. And so I've really just let them bush up and I still have blossoms coming. So I'm excited to see kind of how that turns out. But there's a huge spider web right here. But you can see behind there, there's just fruit all over up in there. So stoked. And here we are at our three sisters bed, which has been so annoying. Um, I've shown you quite a few times, but the corn got not very tall and then it just froze. Squash took forever to come up. Actually, it didn't come up at all. So then I went and got plants, starts, and I thought, well, that's foolproof. And they're teensy. Uh, they do have blossoms that keep coming on, but a lot of them have dropped. Hopefully that was just the male blossoms that come at the beginning and we'll get more, but that is to be determined. <laughs> and then even the beans, the beans came up and just stopped. It was just frozen in time. It was the most annoying thing. But things now all of a sudden have started to go up. So you can see, oh, now my corn decides to grow. I haven't seen a single silk anywhere, but I'm just gonna see what happens. I don't know, you never know. You never know. Uh, but the beans have started growing too, and there are blossoms on them. And we still have time for beans to do their thing. Since the corn and stuff isn't very tall, these are um, like Blue Lake pole beans. So I may just put some, some poles in here if they need a bit of help. You can see that one is starting to get really tall and it's just completely wrapped around the corn stalk like this here. So that's the state of this. This is our asparagus and strawberry bed. The strawberries have been doing great. These ones are ever bearing, so we are still getting berries, but the kids come in and pick them all the time and they're usually green when they pick them. So we've gotten a few and they're pretty tasty. Over here is the more perennial, it's got some annuals too, but mostly perennial flower bed and then herbs because I can't leave any space without edibles in it. <laughs> but the basil's doing great. This is my, this is the one that could, my basil plant. So it's doing really well. Uh, the lavender is in full bloom and really gorgeous. This is my stevia plant, which is flowering, but I keep just kind of pinching those flowers off and it will keep going until frost. Uh, what else? My jasmine's doing amazing. Oh, the um, oregano 
is starting to kind of shoot up. And so I'm watching for blossoms, but I haven't seen any yet. And I haven't really harvested a whole lot. I've picked a few leaves for, you know, dinner, but I'm hoping to get a few bundles to dry out uh, to preserve. So we'll see. Uh, the poppy is really pretty. I've never grown poppies before and it just seems like the blossoms do not last, but maybe that's just how poppies roll. I'm not really sure. Dill is getting really big now. Same with that guy. So I come and steal dill quite a bit for pickles and what have you. And I'm gonna come and harvest some for that recipe I'm gonna do later today and post. So it's looking good. You can see actually right back here, I have a purple basil. Let's see if I can get in there so you can see it. That's doing just fine. It's just fine. So that's exciting. Some of my flowers that were earlier season have started to die off, so it's a little sad. And I'm trying to take note of how long things last so I know where to plant some later season stuff. Um, I'd like to do some like echinacea in here, I think. So I'm thinking right around here would be a good spot because a lot of this stuff really dies away later in the summer. So that's the plan. All right, herb bed. It's actually looking a little funky. This time of year is when things go to seed and start to kind of dry out. But my rosemary really grew quite a bit this season. Um, I have some verbena that I got that is not doing amazing. Might be a disaster, time will tell. Um, so, and I know you guys have seen my maple tree and I can't remember if I've talked about it, but it was so weird because leaves just weren't coming and it's always been really healthy in that pot. It's been just fine. And then finally we started getting leaves along the bottom. So I was like, what the what? So I thought maybe the top is just like totally died. I'm going to have to prune it a ton in the fall. But what's strange is it seems like it's grown. There is some new growth kind of at the ends a little bit. So I've done some research, but I need to do a little more about how to prune it next year. But interestingly enough, a ton of other maples in this area have done the exact same thing. So I have no idea what that's about, but it's a, it's a whole ordeal over here, apparently. Um, this is a lavender plant that I had at my office space in town. And this video obviously is during COVID. So I wasn't at my office a ton. And then I recently found out I am losing my office. So I'm closing my business down for the time being. And this guy had dried out quite a bit. So I brought it home and I've been watering it. And there are, you know, green, foliage over there. I'm hoping it makes it. So I'm thinking I'll just prune that back quite a bit and see what happens next year. But see, just still going. It's starting to turn a little yellow. So I'm going to come out and harvest some of the ends again for more drying bundles. But everything's doing fine for the season. I still have work to do where I need to kind of reconstruct this area, give it some height, some color, make it look real nice. Porch plants are good. This bush, I can't remember the name, but I know I've said it before, but I just love it. It's super pretty. Um, if it gets bigger, I think it's supposed to get not huge, but definitely bigger than that. I may end up moving it into a space over there sometime and do something else here, something I can eat. And then Beckett's little flowers, but my bamboo is doing really well. I got just little plants and they're really growing. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. My little thyme right there is doing really well. I've come and harvested that quite a bit. The mint is flowering, so its days are numbered, but that's all right. This potato is still like going strong. I'm just letting it do its thing because I want fatty potatoes in there. So I keep thinking like, can I harvest it yet? But I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. Pink celery is doing really well. It's got lots of big leaves on it. Here's another little disaster. My, one of the twins just like yanked that guy out. So I stuck him back in and I'm hoping he makes it. It's looking a little droopy where the other ones are standing nice and tall. I have that little itty bitty one, but quite a few of them are doing well. This one's starting to get some bigger stalks. So that's exciting. Leeks doing great. I was thinking I may start holding them up just a little bit or putting some mulch in there so that we get more of the white on the bottom. So it's about time to do that. This little volunteer nasturtium is actually flowering. How adorable is that? 
Okay, so we're at my last set of beds. This is the strawberry and chives. See, I have more chive seeds. I have a little bit of weeding to do. This grass comes in here every year. So I try to pick it out when it's little because it's a pain in the butt. But these, um, I, I kind of thought they were ever bearing, but I don't think so. I think they're June bearing. But you know, I don't know because I do still get some blossoms. I don't know if some June bearing still do it a bit. If they're ever bearing. They're not that fabulous. Uh, look at that. I got a little berry, <laughs> a little teensy. Uh, but yeah, like I said, there's still blossoms. But I didn't get a ton of berries this year. Again, I think that's pollination. We've got an issue. Uh, this guy that I was growing in the grow bag, I tried to hang it, but it was just too heavy. So it's been sitting in here. This is another chore that I've just been meaning to do is come and fill this with some dirt and just pop it in there. But it's still doing really well. The grow bag is really deep. And this is what the pepper was in too. And when I transplanted it, I kind of expected the roots just to be like there. There were roots like all the way down. So it's doing fine. You know, the roots were super healthy. And then it's got fruit on it coming. So that's exciting. This is a sweet million. But I think that if it did have more room, you know, to grow horizontally, it'd probably be a lot bushier. But this was an experiment. It's doing all right. My nasturtiums are looking a little sad. I think I might just need to put them in a bigger pot uh, because they are getting yellow. I water them quite a bit, but I think they might just need a little more space, but they're gorgeous. My friend did this for me. I was so excited and look, there's so many blooms on there. But funny thing is they were supposed to be like black nasturtiums and, um, and hers are black, but then when they started blooming, they're these orange ones. But it looks really gorgeous for this time of year. It's nice orange and red, kind of fall-like, which unfortunately is kind of showing up around here. Uh, the dahlias, they weren't open last time I came here. Let's go this way. Like a day or so ago, they weren't quite open all the way. And those are so pretty. I think I'm gonna pick a few for my table. And this is another kind of perennial flower bed. I started it last year. I've never been a perennial flower grower. I've always just basically grown food, but I wanted to do that. So I had really gorgeous flowers to fill my house with because I love that and to bring in pollinators. So this is always an ongoing experiment, but this year I put in a few more things, some annuals. My calendula is, this one is getting really big. Oh, look, I have a bloom. That's exciting. And then I have quite a few other ones. I started those from seeds. Then I just popped them in all over the place. That is my potato vine, which needs a little more tying up. Uh, the calla lilies are still producing. So that's exciting. I've taken quite a few of them into the house. And then this is the funny, here, there's a spider web. Hold up, gross. <laughs> These are those sweet peas that I tried planting for spring and they didn't do anything. And they were just in little, you know, little starter packs. And then I put them in here and look, I have some sweet peas. Those also, I kind of tried um, wrapping them around the poles and they just didn't take. So I need to get some string. And then I have another one right back there. And so these were the, I think they're called bourgeois, the dark one. It's bourgeois. And on the picture, it looked a little bit darker than this. This looks a little more purple. But that could be the pH of my soil. I'm not sure if sweet peas do that too. And this one was America. It's got like red and white kind of stripes. But I, like I said, I need to pin those up. But I'm thrilled. I got some sweet peas, you guys. Success. So that's it. That's the state of the garden this week. Um, I've finally been harvesting stuff, which obviously is always super exciting. Um, I think planting season is always really fun because you're hopeful for what you're gonna get. And then this time of year is when you start actually getting stuff and see what's worked and what hasn't. Uh, we're still at the beginning of harvesting up here. It's always hard watching videos of people in the South or the Midwest and they've been you know, having tons of squash and tomatoes forever, and they're even kind of over it. And I'm like, mine have not shown up yet. Um, but we still have time in the season. We have, you know, about two months before frost, hopefully. So we've got time, uh, but we're starting to harvest, starting to preserve a few things. So that's always exciting. But we're also already really heading into fall and the fall garden. We have uh, three new beds we're putting in. 
And so I'm pretty excited about that because that's gonna give me a lot more space for fall. Because what I've realized is over here, when you need to be planting for fall, a lot of your summer stuff is, you know, still going gangbusters. So you kind of have to have a rotation of space. So I'm hoping that gives us a lot to eat through the winter. But that's it from me today. I hope you are having a great day and I hope you get to get outside. And thank you so much for watching. And like I said, please subscribe if you wanna see more of these videos. Take care. Oh, here's something I didn't see pop up. This is a hamburger bun with some mustard on it. The kids must have dropped some seeds or something.